Hey pottery peeps. So today I'm back on the wheel. My favorite place to be in the world, right? And don't worry, playing it smart. Believe me, my PT is on it and he will lecture me. And so I swear he's got cameras. <laughs> um, today I am actually going to demonstrate. Um, Sharon Hoppy sent me this. Um, it's not sponsored, but she sent me her new um, bat system that comes with kind of like, um, how was it called? It used to be called the Wonder Bat system. Um, similar, but, or is it the soup? I don't know, Super Bat system. I have two of those and I don't like using them mainly because um, this is so tight. This is so tight in there that I have to pry with the screwdriver on pretty much all three sides. And so it makes it tough for me. Um, my students don't have any problem. Two of my students, that's their favorite bat system. Um, the rest of us like this um, bleaker system that I've used quite often. And so I'm excited to see what um, Sharon's come up with because I've always loved her products. And I know that she uses a very, um, I think it's the best um, MDF composite material that's out on the market. It's a really high quality, so um, I bet I'm not going to have any issues warping or that kind of thing. I'm going to throw a couple of stuff on it. I haven't used it yet. It's brand new. Also, the bats that come, um, a lot of them have the holes in it. So if you're hand building and you have a wheel and you do both like I do, um, like some of her molds, you can, you know, put in, you can use them just like she's got a banding wheel system. That's really, really great. Um, and this is the same type of concept. You're just using your electric wheel. So, and you've got the bats here to do it. And I believe it comes with two, four, six, eight of the bats. I believe, I'm not sure. Um, but anyway, I am going to throw a bunch of bowls, different, um, I'm still kind of on the morphing and the splitting the rims and trying to do things that are one-offs that don't require me to be in here for hours. Though I would love it if I could be in here for hours. It's my favorite place in the world. Um, so I'm just gonna throw some bowls and uh, let's see how this new... Okay, so first off, it's got these great, really, they're hard rubber grommets, grommets, that it's actually, it's a, this is bigger than my wheel. Sorry about that, guys. Let's see. So it's a little wider than my wheel. Oh, it works. It'll spin if I keep my tray out. Okay. And then, I'm going to put them in this way. Let's see, if I were to be using them with the holes, I would, well, actually that's the way the hole goes, so I'm sure that's the way to go then. All right, so let's see how this works. Okay, I am gonna have some trouble with my splash pan, it looks like. So I can see that there's a little play in there. Um, if you have that chamois thing that you put down on your wheel, there wouldn't be. That doesn't bother me. I get play in the bleaker system that I use. <laughs> Probably gonna get that red ink on the clay. That'll be fun. I'll send it to Sharon. <laughs> have her name backwards. <laughs> All right. I hope I don't have too many shadows. It's middle of the day. It is overcast, but um, you know how it goes. All right, let's see if I can, with this knee, get my wheel going fast enough. There we go. So this is one pound of B-Mix, and I'm just going to throw a bowl. One that I'm going to morph the rim. We're going to try for a shamrock, since, um... Valentine's Day is coming up next week, but if you want to make anything for St. Patrick's, you should be making it now. So I'm just going to 
Just keeping it tight. I like that it's not rough and tearing up my hands because a lot of times with the MDF that can happen. This is a really smooth MDF. Getting that little bit off with my thumb. And I once again did not wedge this clay. It's right out of the bag, which is why I'm spending a little bit more time wedging it on the wheel, coning up and coning down. Alright, so I'm going to go in with my thumbs. You can check your bottom. I've been doing this long enough that I know with my fingers here and my thumbs in here, I kind of know where my bottom's at and I always end up with um, a little bit less than a quarter of an inch. So now I'm going to open it up. So that's where the play's at. But that didn't bother me. Mainly because the other ones are so tight um, that I can't get them out. It makes it really frustrating to get them out. I've even broken a couple of wooden um, tools because I didn't have a screwdriver. Because you know, you, can ne you never have those when you need them. All right, so I'm just gonna make a bowl. Oh, I didn't put my swirl in. Let me do that. Okay, so this is gonna most likely be my last pole before I shave. And I really, really wanna get the clay that's down there. I'm going to come in with my finger and really push, be aggressive with that push, and then be really light because you can tell this is pretty thin. All right, there's our bowl. So this is a great salad bowl. Actually, it's more of a cereal ice cream bowl shape. I'm just going to take off the... I love how easy that was. Actually, hold on. <laughs> Let me clean this up a bit. I've got some slip in here I want to get out of. I like throwing lines, but the slip, if you leave an extra slip, It'll be raised. You'll have bumps in your glaze, and that I don't want. So with a bowl, chili bowl, cereal bowl, um, just for function, just a tip, um, you should have them kind of come in just a bit so that when you're pulling up with your spoon, it hits that rim and stops. So like salad bowls, they're usually splayed out or pasta bowls because you're in there with a fork and you're digging and you're getting things. But with a, anything that's got soup, cereal, ice cream, you want to scoop and yet not have it overflow from this rim. So there is um, my tip on uh, throwing good cereal and chili and soup bowls. All right, I do love how easy that was to come out. Okay, so... I'm going to try it this way since that has the hole in it and see if there's any difference. So we'll try that. And maybe I had it upside down. We'll find out if it works better this way. If there's, it takes care of that play. I didn't notice a play. Um, centering just when I opened and I was pulling against it. But again, something like that. All my bats give me, that bleaker system gives me some play with that. It'll do that. Alright, so I'm just going to go ahead and open it up. Where'd my sponge go? Oh. 
So I always put water in the middle. Okay, let's play with it being that direction when you open up. But like I said, that doesn't bother me. Because actually my biggest um, complaint about the Wonder Bat system or the Super Bat system, I cannot remember what it's called, is I cannot get, once the wood gets in here, this is brand new, it's never been wet before. And when the wood on those other bats gets in there, it swells and I have a really tough time getting them out. Okay, so I'm just pulling up my wall. I don't want that to happen. So I'm just gonna spend some time compressing so I don't get two walls of clay meeting. Correct that now <laughs> before it's a problem. And then if you'll notice, every time I go to do a pull, I dig into that foot. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and do my last one that slow my wheel down. I do go fast on my wheel. If your hands start, if your fingers start grabbing on that clay, get it wet. I think I pushed it out too far too, so I'm going to bring in, if you start, you think you're going to lose your walls, bring in a rib, metal rib, wooden rib, and throw against the rib. It'll help compress those walls. Okay. Now let's do something fun and morph this one. We did heart bowls last week. Let's try for a um, shamrock. All right, I'm going to wipe off my wooden rib here. I'm going to stop my wheel. Oh, this is perfect. I didn't even think about this. I've got four places. You guys, I don't have to get anything out to measure. I already have them in place. Thank you, Sharon. I don't know if she thought about that, but that's awesome. So I'm gonna take my metal or my wooden rib and I am going to push in against it and do, oh, I need to get it wet so it doesn't stick to the plate. So I'm gonna push right in against it and then bring my fingers out. Oh, I love to have the four corners. Do the same here. Oh, this is going to be fun. All right, that won it for me right there. Good job, Sharon. Okay, so not quite a four leaf clover. But what you do is you hold these in and then you just pull that out into your petal. I love bowls like this. If you've been watching for a while, you've heard me talk. I love to morph the rim of my bowls. After it um, sets up, I actually might um, pull this out more. But for right now, I really like it. I'm just going to smooth off the rib mark because it did leave a line. A dowel would be good for this, except for I wanted more of a sharp point. Actually, my bowl might be a little bit wet, so I'll have to touch this up after when it stiffens up a little bit. Actually, I can actually just, I can do it with my fingers now. Cool. Guess it doesn't matter which direction. So this bowl, I wanted to kind of split the rim, and I'm just taking um, a metal. This I think I got from Bill Van Gilder, who sells tools, and I can list him in also into the description. I'll list this bat too for Sharon. I'm just going to come in here and make a mark. 
I left my rim a little thicker and I'm just going to split it. That will give me a fun place for the glaze to catch, but I do want to make sure it's not sharp. Okay. But now that we've done that, um, actually let's take, I've got a paintbrush here. Let's do this with a paintbrush this time rather than the wooden rib. So I'm just going to come in here on those four and I'm going to squish that together and pull that up. again. They really define that. My clay is super soft. This B mix was really soft coming out of the bag and of course then you throw with it and it's even softer. So you could wait to do this. Um, just don't wait too long. And then I'm just going to clean up Actually, I'm going to wait to clean up those lines until after it stiffens up a little bit. And then I'm just going to round off our little shamrock petals. There. Ooh, I like that. That'll be a fun place for the glaze to catch in here. And I'll put pictures at the end so you can see what I've done. Okay, it's been a while since I have done one of these bowls. Let me, I do a lot of flower bowls too, but it's been a while, probably a year. But spring's coming, right? It's snowing outside right now, but spring's on its way. So I am going to get my hands wet first. So I'm going to go ahead and like we did with the heart bowl, go completely across. And then, is this how I did it? I do believe so. Nope, that's not how I did it. Okay, let's do our four corners. <laughs> Sorry, it's been a while. And I'm just taking my finger wet against and lightly moving it back and forth while my other fingers are holding the clay. That's actually a really cool square bowl. But I will usually come in and go the opposite this direction. I am digging the marks here. And there is a little flower. You can, um, it looks like a, um, the uh, flower for the hydrangeas. So, whoops. Slipped, sorry. I'm gonna just do this really quick. <laughs> just, because my clay is so soft. And like I said, when it starts to firm up, I'm gonna come back here and do even more to it. There. So your little hydrangea blossom. Ooh, we're getting some suction. Okay. Huh. All right. I just had an idea. Put some water down and then let's try this. I wonder if that will keep, yep. Okay, there's no play if you put water down. Like I said, I've never seen these being used. Um, I think it's a new product of hers that she's coming out with. 
and um, she sent it to me to um, play with. And so, yeah, that, well, I got that way off. <laughs> so if you get it way, way off when you first get it on, sometimes I would just stop the wheel and put it on again. Hold it. Just hold it. If you ever watch Matthew Kelly Pottery, I'll link him too. He's amazing. Um, he doesn't, he rarely cones up and cones down. He does prepare his clay, you know, with the pug mill. And while I do have a pug mill, it's in my basement, <laughs> and it's gonna go in the clay shed right behind the wall that I'm sitting on. But until then, I am wedging clay or coning up and coning down. But he, he prepares his clay really well and then he can just hold his clay on the wheel and he centers right away. Where is my water is getting sticky. When it gets too slip or when there's too much slip when I've been throwing with it for too long, it gets sticky. I like that split rim. I want to try that again. So if I'm going to do a split rim, which I didn't know I was going to do on that one, the one thing you do want to do is you want to leave more clay on your rim. So don't get your walls too thin. Leave that clay right there so that you've got something to play with. Because you can do double splits, triple splits. Let's see how much clay I end up with. It's hard sometimes to correct muscle memory. Um, I'm used to throwing really thin, and so sometimes it's hard to leave clay there when you're trying to do something. Actually, you know what? I'm going to try something new. Rather than form the bowl, my walls are consistent and they're thin, but I haven't pushed it out yet. I haven't pushed it out far anyway. So, let's... um. Come in here, split this thicker rim. I need to get that clay off though. You know what? I have done this this way before too. I'm just gonna get that slip off. I'm actually gonna get my needle tool wet and I'm gonna split it with my needle tool. If I didn't go through, <laughs> I might have gone through with the needle tool and then put some water in there. I'm pretty sure I went all the way through. So if I did that, I'm just going to push that back in. Seal that back up. <laughs> so I got a pretty big split there. And then let's see what happens. It doesn't work. <laughs> it doesn't work. We're playing. I'm playing. Actually, I just might start over. Actually, it's kind of cool. Now let's take one that's a little bit more blunt. There we go. We saved it. Mistakes are your friend because it gives you the opportunity to try something else, learn more about the clay. So don't shy away from making mistakes. My hands are actually touching the clay. There we go. Yeah, that's a much nicer I left more clay there, so I've got a much nicer um, split on the rim. And then I'm going to come in and do the same thing because I want some shamrocks. 
but my clay is super, super soft. So I will push these out a little bit more, make these more defined once it sets up. Such a cute shape. I love Lucky Charms, or not Lucky Charms, but Shamrocks. I did not care for Lucky Charms. All my siblings would go for the marshmallows, and I didn't like the marshmallows. But then I don't really care for things that are sweet. I'm more of your bitter type of, like black coffee. Dark chocolate. Maybe it's lunchtime. All right, so I'm gonna hold those and then just kind of swoop. Now it's okay if they close because there's still a line there. Um, and the glaze is going to give us, make that line even darker when it settles into there. These, um, it's about four hours later and uh, these bowls, I have um, marked them again or smoothed them out and made it made them more pronounced and then I decided to add some decorative detail so I did a whole bunch of these little balls and let me get my brush so I'm just gonna put these little balls in the corners just I don't know these are fun so why not right they're just decorative balls. I'm just setting them right there. I'm not setting them up over the rim. I want them down below. Uh, if you've been watching me for a while, I don't like um, it. I know so many people who either wash their pottery or um, turn them upside down in the cupboards. And so this, I always try to have the rims anything I don't like things sticking up above the rims that's my own personal thing okay so I've added the little dots there and since this is a shamrock I went and I have what is it um I have a bunch of these type of stamps and if you just type that name into Google, you'll find it. Uh, they come, a lot of them come into sets and that's going to be too big. That's okay. We're just going to go ahead and go through it. It won't do the full mark, but it will do, a, won't do the full design, but it'll do a little bit of a mark. And don't do this when... <laughs> Okay, when they're too wet, don't do this. Let's see here. We're just gonna take that one off and start with a new one. So I just wiped that off of my apron because I've got, you know, a dusty apron <laughs> because it's a pottery apron and I don't want to get up and find my cornstarch. So. Let's see here push that out so I need to kind of straighten it back up again so just a little bit of detail just to add to a simple bowl to something fun okay it's the next day I ran out of light last night and but didn't they just turn out so super cute <laughs> I uh um big huge fan of morphing bowls if you haven't um, gathered that from me yet. I 
plan to glaze them green and these little decorative little things that I added, I actually just might gold buster them. That might be cute, you know? Leprechaun with a little bit of gold, you know, shamrock. I think it all works. Um, anyway, I am a huge fan of Sharon's bat system that goes on the wheel. Um, it is set up to where it would be hard to throw something that was um, wide, um, but mugs, bowls, anything like that, perfect. And the bats don't take up a lot of room and so forth. I am looking forward to um, utilizing the hole in some of these bats to do some hand building bowls and so forth. So if you're interested in that, let me know in the comments and I'll do that next, I think. <laughs> Actually, I've got some glazing to do, and I actually plan to um, show you how I'm going to do it on those big bowls that I did a couple weeks ago. Um, they're all fired and ready for me to glaze, so uh, that might be the next one. And then um, we'll do, well, if you want to see me playing with this bat system with um, some molds and uh, doing some hand building bowls, we'll do that. Anyway, let me know. Go get muddy. Have a great weekend. Uh, enjoy the Super Bowl if you're a football fan or a Taylor Swift fan. And um, we will see you in the next video. You want to come in the studio? Yeah, I know. You're such a happy girl.